Hello everyone and I hope that you're well today. Um, so today's recipe is um, Golgappa. Um, this is a name used um, in Pakistan and Punjab um, to refer to um, these little snacks, street food snacks, um, but they're also known as Pani Puri in India. Um, so we are going to make show you how to make um, the little puris that you use to eat them with um, and then in a future video, um, probably releasing tomorrow, um, we'll also be tucking in to some so that you can see exactly what goes in there, um, how to prepare them and how to enjoy them. So let's begin this video. So today's ingredients, uh, we've got 150 grams of suji, which is semolina, one tablespoon of plain flour, uh, one eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of oil um, and I'll also be using some water just to bind the dough together. Okay, so let's begin making this dough. So I'm going to take the one cup of semolina or suji and just pop it into a bowl. And then I'm going to add with this um, the salt and the baking powder, baking soda and the oil as well and then I'm just going to begin sort of working the oil in with my fingers and um, just to kind of break up those oil bubbles that you get and it should be similar to sort of a bread crummy mixture so just take um, a couple of minutes just to do that so that you don't get any um, oil lumps. It's actually quite nice, it reminds me of playing with sand as a child. This is the nearest I'm going to get to a beach in the middle of February. The sun is shining so we can pretend. Okay, so a minute later and I think it's all broken down nicely. So let's now add the plain flour. I'm just going to um, sort of gently mi uh, mix all of this in as well. And I've got my jug of water because it's nearly time to begin to bind this all together. So what you want to do is um, add it all very gently um, so we don't add too much water at one go. So little by little um, is always better. So it's nearly, I can't see any more lumps of flour. So let's start with the water then. So we're going to take just a little bit, and begin to work it all together. You see how I'm just adding a little by little um, because it's hard to tell um, how much it's actually needed so it's better just do it little bit by bit and then you get that really nice consistency. But not too much effort to make these so um, it's much nicer to make your own than to buy them I think. Okay, so um, it's probably been about three minutes or so um, of me um, kneading this dough. We're nearly there, there's still some more to gather. Um, but just to give you an idea of the amount of water I've used for the one cup of sem semolina or suji, it's probably about, um, to start off with, about three tablespoons of water, um, just to begin to bind it together. And then after that, if it continues to be a little bit drier, um, you can continue with one uh, tablespoon at a time. Um, so it's probably for me been about five tablespoons of water. Because um, the way that uh, semolina works is that it continues to absorb water. So it can be a bit tricky to um, determine what um, 
how it's going to hold on to that water, the texture it's going to leave. Um, so, and it's really important that we get a nice stringy texture. Um, so it's good to sort of just do it little bit by bit um, so that we don't get too much of a, um, a uh, hard dough, which it, mine still is now, um, or too much of a sort of soft dough. You want something quite in the middle. It's really important to be able to get that nice bubble, that nice crispy bubble that you want um, when you go to fry it. So at this point I'm probably just going to add just a little bit with my fingers just to not overdo the water. And continue kneading. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes that my um, dough has been resting. Um, so let's have a little look. So it's kept nice and moist. I really love this technique of using um, a damp cloth that just keeps it really nice. So I'm now just going to spend a couple of minutes continuing to knead. Um, and then I'm going to be rolling the dough out. I've also got my oil um, ready to deep fry these so that the oil is just heating up gently um, on a sort of medium-ish heat because it's still going to take some time to prepare the um, Golgoppa. So it's been about two minutes now and um, I've just given it a little knead. So let's start to roll this dough out. Um, I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to split it into three and just work with one of the sections. So three roughly even sections. I'm going to put two back into that damp cloth just so that keeps nice while I um, roll out this dough. Okay, so I've got a small um, cutter here. Um, that I will use to um, take the little circles of the Golgotha. And as I was also mentioning, my oil is getting nice and hot. So what we are looking to do is roll this out into a circle, um, but it's got to be quite a thin um, dough. Um, so let's see how we get on. So I'm going to start off by rolling it into a circle just to help with the shape and then into a flat circle squashed circle it doesn't really matter overly um, how this part of your dough rolls out to be because we are just going to shape them with the cutter or if you've got a lid um, that's also good but um, for those of you who are not sure of how to make um, or have not eaten Golgotha before, they need to be able to go um, into, they're like one bite of pieces. Um, so they need to be able to fit in your mouth. <laughs> so just make sure that your lid um, or whatever you're using is not too big um, because you're essentially going to fill them um, and you need to get it all in in one go. This consistency is lovely and smooth. It's really easy to work with, which is great. Um, and it's also really important that um, the dough is even throughout because this is going to be really important for um, the rise um, and uh, when it um, puffs up. Um, if it's too thick on one side, it might not um, rise um, evenly. So it's really important to try and keep that consistency. So I'm just continuing now to roll out this dough. Um, so I just want to mention that this is um, slightly a, a slightly sticky dough, um, but don't be tempted to add any more dry flour onto your board or the surface. Um, it's really good to just keep working with it as it is. And um, when it comes to that frying process, you don't want excess uh, flour. Um, it will also help the shape and things if you just 
um, leave it as it is. Um, so just because it is slightly sticky, you've got to keep uh, taking it off and flipping it round. I find that helps. The other thing I would like to say is that if once you begin to roll out your dough, it should be really nice and smooth and there shouldn't be any cracks in it, otherwise it's going to again affect the rise um, of the gold guppa. Okay, so I've got that nice thin dough now, um, which is really good. It's really important that you get um, a consistency um, throughout, so it's all the same. Um, so you've, it's all even basically so that'll just really help when it comes to the rise um, so I've just got a little cutter now and I'm just going to go through and get as many little um, gold guppers as I can um, and then it'll be ready to fry Okay, so my oil is nice and hot now, so I'm going to begin the frying. So just drop them in, and you should immediately see the magic happen, um, and then for it to rise. Um, so once you've created this nice little airy ball shape, you want it to be nice and golden as well. So just make sure it's nicely cooked on either side. You see it's turning to turn a nice golden colour. And I've also got some kitchen tissue ready um, so that I can pop them onto the kitchen tissue and uh, let the oil uh, absorb. So let's do a few now. I'm just going to continue until I've got all of them ready. Be quite quick and on it so they don't burn. So the gold guppa is all prepared, all been fried nicely, they've all risen really great. So just a little test, see how great they are. Oh wow, yeah. Now tell me that's not ready for a nice filling of chickpeas and onions and other wonderful things that you add into gold guppa. 
Okay, so we've come to the end of preparing our Golgotha or Pani Buri. Um, I'm really proud of myself. I feel like they've all turned out really well um, and I've made quite a lot as well so that I can put them into a nice airtight box um, and save them for another day so that I can use them when and wherever we, me and Amir would like to enjoy them. So they're really great if you want to, you know, take the time to make these and then store them. Um, it's a great way to do that. So I guess I should try one. There's no filling, unfortunately, um, but so I'll give it a go. Mmm. It's so crispy. And the whole thing just fell apart, fell apart in my mouth. Um, and if there was lots of lovely filling inside there, you'd be able to just get a burst of flavour, which is the most important thing when you're eating. Um, Golgotha. So I really hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Um, to follow this um, um, video we also will be eating a few of these um, in tomorrow's video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other social media because we've got so much going on on there at the moment um, and so I will see you again next time. Take care and bye for now!